Many of us would use words like fascinating, breathtaking, and spectacular to describe nature. However, we also know that nature can be harsh and cruel. Even though the world has witnessed numerous disasters over the centuries, and though many are man-made due to wars and terrorism, Mother Nature certainly dishes out her fair share of damage. With today's access to modern smartphones and their powerful cameras, the internet is awash in amateur videos of natural disasters that have happened across the globe. These videos show that beyond being dangerous and damaging towards our civilization, these events shape our planet and sometimes affect where and how we live. Today, I'll be your guide through five natural disasters that were caught on tape. We're going to see the true power of nature as well as some of the lessons that we learned from catastrophic events. Prepare to see some frightening footage that will put you in the shoes of the video's director, making you feel as if you're experiencing the following natural disasters personally. A thunderstorm over Bill Snyder Family Stadium. Spectators of the football game between Kansas State University and the University of Central Florida that was played on September 25, 2010, managed to capture an intimidating natural phenomenon. Most of the spectators grabbed their smartphones and pointed them towards the sky in an effort to capture slate-colored clouds looming over Manhattan, Kansas. For many of us, this looks like a scene from a sci-fi movie. However, those who live in Kansas might not be as surprised, since this kind of thunderstorm cloud often appears in that part of the world. This eye-catching and quite intimidating cloud is a shelf cloud, which forms when a downdraft with a severe thunderstorm hits the surface, forcing up the warm, humid air ahead of it. This is usually a low, horizontal, wedge-shaped cloud that is attached to the base of the parent cloud, which is usually a thunderstorm. Just like this footage shows, rising cloud motion often can be seen in the leading part of the cloud, while the underside often appears turbulent and wind-torn. Very often, shelf clouds are followed by strong winds, heavy rain, and sometimes snow, sleet, and hail. In contrast, shelf clouds sometimes disintegrate with no precipitation at all. The game started as scheduled, but only a few minutes had ticked off the clock before lightning struck, suspending play for nearly an hour and a half while dark clouds swirled overhead. Rain poured onto the stadium, forcing police and security guards to usher fans out of the bleachers. When the game resumed, the purple-clad K-State Wildcats clawed past the Knights in the final minute by a score of 17-13. to 13. Luckily for those who found themselves at the game, the intimidating clouds disintegrated soon after. Even though this wasn't a natural disaster, this footage shows the true power of nature. Indian Ocean Tsunami Strike On December 26, 2004, a magnitude 9.2 earthquake ruptured the seafloor off Indonesia, sending the most destructive tsunami in recorded history across the Indian Ocean. A wall of water and debris slammed the shores of South Asia and brought with it massive destruction. Tourists and locals alike scrambled to safety atop tall hotels and recorded videos of the surging water that inundated their beloved communities. Even with their best effort, many were unable to reach higher ground. The hypocenter of the earthquake was 10 kilometers below the surface and about 250 kilometers offshore of Sumatra. Witnesses in the Indonesian city of Banda Aceh with a population of more than 200,000 reported five to six minutes of violent shaking during the main quake. What's surprising 
is that the main shake failed to cause any massive damage to buildings, which actually happened during the aftershocks. This was the only city to report direct damage from the earthquake. Most of the day's damage would come from the tsunami waves generated by the earthquake. The tsunami waves hit 11 countries around the Indian Ocean, stretching from Indonesia all the way to India, with some waves hitting Somalia's shores as well. As was the case in the Indian Ocean in 2004, the pull of the tsunami's rising wave was so great that the water receded from beaches before rushing back in. In Indonesia, Thailand, Myanmar, and other countries close to the epicenter, huge waves washed over coastlines. The tsunami towered as tall as 30 meters. The waves swallowed boats offshore, tore up docks, and washed over beaches within a minute, bringing incredible debris into heavily populated areas. Hotels, shops, homes, and streets were flooded and ripped apart. In low-lying coastal areas, the destruction reached hundreds of meters inland and damaged thousands of kilometers of coastline. The death toll topped more than 230,000 lives. In total, an estimated 1.7 million individuals were displaced and forced to live in refugee camps for up to several years. At the time of the Indian Ocean tsunami, the technology existed to detect such catastrophic events and relay information globally within just a few hours. However, the only tsunami warning system in place at the time was for the Pacific. Today, the Indian Ocean Tsunami Warning and Mitigation System is used to prevent a natural disaster like this from happening again. In addition, Today's social media can play a key role in spreading messages and warning other people to try to get away as far as possible from danger. The Eruption of Mount St. Helens For weeks in the spring of 1980, Mount St. Helens' northern flank rose about five feet a day as magma pushed up from the ground. Then, on May 18th, the ground shook violently as much of the volcano's northern side collapsed in a massive landslide, causing an eruption that spewed ash almost 80,000 feet in the air. 57 people and countless animals died. A forest was leveled, and ash blanketed the region as far away as Minnesota. Even though this happened close to 37 years ago, this natural disaster was caught on tape, giving us a glimpse of what happened that day. Very soon after this event happened, it was clear that the 1980 eruption of Mount St. Helens was the deadliest and most economically destructive volcanic eruption in the history of the United States. Aside from 57 individuals that lost their lives that day, 200 houses and 47 bridges were destroyed. Two people were killed indirectly in accidents that resulted from poor visibility, and two more suffered fatal heart attacks from shoveling ash. U.S. President Jimmy Carter surveyed the damage and said it looked more desolate than a moonscape. A film crew was dropped by helicopter on Mount St. Helens a few days after the eruption to document the destruction. However, their compasses spun in circles and they quickly became lost. As a result of this catastrophic event, the ash fall created major problems with transportation, sewage disposal, and water treatment systems. Aside from highways and roads being closed for up to 10 days after the event, air travel was disrupted for two weeks. Over a thousand commercial flights were canceled following airport closures. Removing and disposing of the ash was a monumental task for some eastern Washington communities. Some cities used old quarries and existing landfills as disposal sites. Others created dump sites wherever expedient. The surfaces of numerous disposal sites were covered with topsoil and seeded with grass, returning the ash back into the ground. Today, hiking is once again allowed on the mountain 
and an observatory provides a unique look into the crater. Scientists hope their constant monitoring can provide enough of a warning for an evacuation if another eruption is imminent. Still, volcanologists at the Smithsonian Institution are warning that Mount St. Helens has a baby volcano growing in its crater, warning us that this type of catastrophic event might happen once again in the future. The Tohoku Earthquake and Tsunami On March 11, 2011, at 2.46 p.m. local time, a magnitude 9.0 earthquake ruptured a 500-kilometer-long fault zone off the northeast coast of Japan. Its epicenter was 130 kilometers off Honshu, which is the largest and most populous island off Japan. The thrusting moved Honshu about 2.4 meters eastward, and the seismic waves set off tsunami waves traveling at the speed of a jet plane. Words like tsunami, volcano, earthquake, and hurricane are basic vocabulary in Japan. The country lies on the Circumpacific Ring of Fire, where Earth's largest and fastest moving tectonic plate is located. With this said, it is clear that Japan can be hardly surprised by an earthquake due to its modern warning systems and preventive measures. Still, the earthquake that happened in 2011 was the country's largest recorded quake. Around 30,000 individuals died during the quake and the tsunami that quickly followed. More than 125,000 buildings have washed away with property damage estimated to be more than $310 billion. The earthquake alone was responsible for the considerable damage. Notable were fires in several cities, including a petrochemical plant in Sendai and an oil refinery at Ichihara near Tokyo. Of significant concern following the main shock and tsunami, was the status of several nuclear power stations in the Tohoku region. The reactors at the three nuclear power plants closest to the quake's epicenter were shut down automatically following the tumbler. However, inundation by the tsunami waves damaged the backup generators at some of those plants, most notably at the Fukushima plant. The cooling systems at this plant failed within the first few days of the disaster, and their cores subsequently overheated. Due to concerns over possible radiation exposure, Japanese officials established a no-fly zone around the facility. An area of 20 kilometers around the plant was evacuated. Even though it was first believed that the area might be uninhabitable for decades, government officials allowed residents to safely return to their homes several months after the incident. This natural disaster is one of the best documented because of the rise of smartphones and social media. The whole world was quickly alarmed, with many of us closely watching what happened at that time. As a result, this helped with relief and rebuilding efforts. Hurricane Katrina. Hurricane Katrina was one of the deadliest hurricanes ever to hit the United States. An estimated 1,833 people died in the hurricane and the flooding in late August of 2005, and millions of others were left homeless along the Gulf Coast and New Orleans. This devastating hurricane which was captured on film by locals and numerous media outlets, was initially formed about 300 kilometers southeast of the Bahamas. By the time it made its way to southern Florida on August 25th, Katrina was a moderate Category 1 hurricane. Even though the storm weakened after passing over Florida, it rapidly gained strength as it continued its devastating journey. It became a Category 5 storm on August 28th, with winds blowing at around 280 kilometers per hour. As the hurricane made landfall, it slammed into Gulfport and Biloxi in Mississippi. A large storm devastated coastal areas across southern Louisiana and coastal Mississippi. Ultimately, 
80% of New Orleans and large portions of nearby parishes flooded, and the floodwaters did not recede for weeks. The National Guard was called in to help with evacuations. Thousands sought refuge in the New Orleans Convention Center and the Superdome, which were both overwhelmed. This was one of the largest displacements of a population in the United States since the Great Depression. Government officials have sought to learn from the tragedy and implement better protection systems. The Army Corps of Engineers has rebuilt the levee system, making the barriers higher and supporting them with steel beams. The City of New Orleans has improved resident access to evacuation and alert information. Still, more than one decade later, this region is still recovering from Katrina. While many of the tourist areas, such as the famous French Quarter, have recovered, there are still neighborhoods just a short ride from the city that are just gone. If you find it mysterious, share and like this video. Also, be sure to subscribe because you don't want to miss what's coming next. As always, thank you for watching.